One of my favorite aspects of working with NURB surfaces is that they require a bit more forethought than any other type of surface. You're going to find when you're working with NURBs that if you go in and just start trying to sling together a surface, maybe I'll, I'll throw in a plane over here and I'll sculpt it into something, and then I'll throw in another plane and maybe a cylinder and I'll try to start attaching those, you're going to have kind of a rough go of it, and you're going to have a hard time maintaining all of those rules that you have to follow with NURB surfaces. If you take a second and plan out the type of surface you have to create, and if you think about the kind of tools you're going to need to use ahead of time, you're going to have a much easier time putting together your model in the first place. It all boils down to choosing the right tool for the job. Now, in order to know which tool you need to create any given type of surface, you're going to have to practice using the NURBS tools, which is something that uh, you're going to be able to do after we go over all of the NURBS tools a little bit later on. We're going to be talking about every single NURBS tool, all of the options for it. We're going to talk about all of the surfacing tools, such as loft, by rail and whatnot. But I just wanted to take a second and remind you that, you know, when you're working with NURBS, it's going to pay off for you to stop before you start doing anything with a model and just consider what it is you're trying to make and remember what you learn about each tool and apply that before you even go in and start building anything. Take your tools and get as close as you can Kind of mentally. Here's what, I'm, here's what I mean. I'll just go ahead and give you a, a visual example. The age-old example that I think I've seen in just about every classroom is a, is a wine glass. And yeah, some of you guys who've done some nerves modeling in the past might roll your eyes and go, ah, oh, you're just going to revolve. But you don't have to revolve to make a wine glass. You can start off by creating a nerves circle, like so. And we could scale this out, and I could duplicate it. Now, it looks like a flat plane from here, right? Yeah, that's the idea. And we could duplicate this up and scale it in. And then duplicate it up again. And scale it in some more. And duplicate it up again. This time we'll scale out a bit. Duplicate up again. Now we'll scale out a lot. And we'll duplicate up one more time like so. So now if I grab all of these surfaces, and let's, let's make sure I grab them in some sort of order, and let's also make sure that I delete history on them first before I do anything, so no history, there we go. Let's grab you, I'm going to shift select you, 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 boom, boom, boom. Go to surfaces and choose loft. And there we go, one wine glass, a little bit unsightly, but nothing we can't adjust with a little bit of construction history. So we kind of scale that out a little bit, maybe slide it down a tad, and we have a beautiful wine glass that, uh, you know, we could have a, a celebratory, hey, I just finished the Mastering Maya class drink out of. Now, that's just one way to approach this surface, but maybe a more intelligent way, maybe something that would get you there a little bit faster and allow you to create the inner surfaces uh, much more quickly would be to create a CV curve or an EP curve. You could really go either way. I'm just so used to using these CV curves. Man, it's just it's what I do. So let's see. I'm grid snapping, and boom. Now I'll just kind of follow inward. Make this more like a brandy glass if I wanted to. And we'll just follow this in. I'll get right to about here. Hold down Shift and X. Boom. So now I have this profile, which is, you know, it's a little lumpy, but that's okay. I don't, don't want to waste too much time putting this together. And now we can go to Surfaces, Revolve, and let me reset my settings. And click Revolve, and there we go. A new wine glass created in an entirely different manner, except this wine glass has an inner surface, has a bottom, and everything else. The point is that once you know the tools, you're going to have an easier time thinking about how you're going to create each surface and how you're going to get them attached to one another. Uh, think about things like by rails, which, uh, well, let's, let's say, for example, we're going to create a character's nose, all right? Let me go into a side view, and I'll get my CD curve tool out again. And let's see, let's create... A profile of a character's nose. Now, let's also then go ahead and make the profile for if you're just kind of running down the side of the nose. So, like, you know, we come out here. Let me back up just a little bit. So here's maybe where his nostril comes in, like so. 
And then we have that uh, other profile where, you know, we don't really have any more definition. The nose itself is pretty much done. So we have these three curves. They're all pretty much in line with one another. Whoops, I don't want to do that. I'm going to grab these. Let's space them out a little bit. And if you guys have uh, done any NURBS modeling before, and if you watched some of those uh, Maya Fundamentals videos, the next best thing for me to do is to figure out uh, my spans and do some rebuilding. So let me go ahead and grab Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve. Let me open up my uh, Attribute Editor. This is a 9-span curve. This one's 8, and this one is 6. Well, let's just go ahead and leave them all at 9. So I'll rebuild them all to 9 with Uniform. A little bit of a shape change, but this is just a simple example anyway, so that's no big deal. Now, we could, if we wanted to, grab all three of these, one, two, three, and we could run a loft, like so. Or another uh, option that we have is to, uh, let me space these out just a little bit more, we could create an EP curve that we could use like a rail. Let me just kind of curve snap it here, and then we'll go here into the top view. And let's say we want to curve this back to sort of the shape of the face. Is that set to linear? It looks like it is. Let me back that up and get rid of that. Open up my tools. Yeah, I want a cubic curve. The last time I used this, I must have set it to linear for heaven only knows what reason. Now let's go ahead and I'll curve snap again. Now with a, a new curve, let's go ahead and bring this back. So this would be like the curve of the upper lip, like so. And we can go ahead and curve snap a point up here, and we can do the same thing. Here's like, you know, the curve of the forehead a little bit. Now, we just make sure that these curves touch our two rails. Like any adjustments we might need. It looks like this curve now needs to be kind of slid backwards a little bit. We'll kind of push it back. We'll grab its CVs, just the ones here at the ends, and we'll curve snap these over, and I'll curve snap this over. Now, this is just a simple example, so I'm not trying to go for any kind of super realism. All of that will come later on. I'll just sort of reshape this just a tad. Now, we can create a by rail out of this surface. So we could uh, go to Surfaces, by rail in this case, 3+, plus, and we'll be talking about this tool a little bit later. And uh, let's see, all of that looks good, so let's just enter the tool. And we'll grab our three profiles, press enter, grab our two rails, and boom, we get a new surface. And you can see we've kind of got you know, a little bit of nostril action here, right along the side of the nose. Now, it could use a little bit of tweaking, but we can still adjust that with our curvature. What I'm getting at, as many of you have probably already kind of picked up, think about your tools once you get to know them, and think about which tool would be the best way to approach any given surface. I mean, when you're, when you're about to start building something, stop and go, okay, which of the tools that I know will be the easiest way to come up with the surface at hand? Should I use a loft? Should I consider using a by rail I mean, here, I've got a pretty nice-looking nose, uh, just with a little bit of tweaking, without having to really do a whole lot. I mean, I just, you know, grabbed a couple of curves and uh, attached them with some rails, and there you go. So uh, that's really all I wanted to get out. Just think about the tools you have on hand. Think about your primitives. Are you building an arm or a leg? I mean, the, the general shape of an arm or a leg, as you've already uh, been, uh, been made aware, is well, relatively cylindrical. So you could start off with a cylinder. You could uh, grab the isoparms and the CVs. You could adjust the shape using holes and then uh, add, maybe add some more detail and then sculpt that. Just uh, think about what you have on hand and use that to make the most educated decision for creating your surfaces. It's going to wrap things up for this discussion. Thanks a lot.